so later in Fuji's life, so we'll sort of skip beyond wrestling because I think you left WWF in 1988. And I don't know how much you kept in contact with Fuji after the business, but he ended up working in a cinema uh, later in his life. Um, what do you remember sort of after wrestling or like how close were you after? We, we would talk on the phone. I went, he was running some shows in Tennessee and had a, a wrestling school for a while. So my wife was with a um, travel agency at the time and um, used to get me tickets and stuff. So I, I, I went back. I, I did a show for food, a couple of shows, I think, for food. The first thing he did was grab me and take me to a Chinese restaurant. <laughs> you know, it was a Chinese restaurant, a Korean restaurant over here. I, the food, I just came from Hawaii. Yes. <laughs> you know, Koreans and Chinese people all over the place. As I eat Chinese food for lunch, you know, it's not, you know, it's not a, Oh, no, no, come on, come on, come on, come on. We go over there. Go over here, the Chinese buffet, like a Korean, you know. Was, he was running, always running everybody in and out of restaurants all the time. He was always running to a Chinese restaurant. The demolition will tell you the same thing. He was always running them to Chinese restaurants. Was he paying? Half the time, yeah. Oh, yeah, who'd you, who'd you spend? Yeah, he was, uh, yeah, he, was, he, wasn't, uh, he wasn't tight at all. And uh, I'll take you to the Hall of Fame ceremony, and of course, you gave the speech. Uh, do you remember what it was like that day? Uh, he was laid back. Well, you know, Fuji didn't care. And he was, he was just showing up, you know, and uh, doing his thing. Having, you know, he was, was kind of. I didn't realize he fell asleep. <laughs> he <laughs> fell asleep on stage. <laughs> he fell asleep during the presentation, and he, he oh. Oh, 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 why do you wake me up? Why do you wake me up? <laughs> and then you're resting so peacefully. I didn't want to bother you. He's, oh, yeah, yeah he, he fell asleep during the presentation. <laughs> yeah, he was, he was really excited. <laughs> Nervous. You only gave a three-minute speech. I mean, how quickly could he have fallen asleep? Oh, this was during the whole presentation, during the, while we were, while we were sitting there waiting uh, ah. for our turn. I guess they paid. I think they even panned it one time. They had him in his, his nodding out over there. <laughs> yeah, he was a uh, he was on edge. <laughs> right, I'm going to ask you a few uh, sort of like uh, not quick fire questions, but a few random Fuji questions, and then we're going to lock this uh, lock this podcast down. The very first one, and uh, the first one is: Did you have any trouble understanding what the heck he was saying sometimes? Because his accent, I oh, couldn't, yeah. I couldn't. I couldn't understand what he was saying half the time when he was doing interviews. Well, coming from Hawaii, I had a better grasp, you know, the pidgin English. We speak a lot of pidgin English over here. And uh, so he and I, you know, but there were times, you know, there were the, uh, you know, talking about the, the, what's the promo film, the promo, what's the promo film? The promo, promo, promo. He meant porno. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, you know, there were times you know, that I was uh, I was stuck for an answer when he said something, but yeah. <laughs> uh, where do you rank Fuj on the list of the all-time great drinkers in the business? Oh, right up there, you know. No Andre the Giant. Got buzzed a couple of times because got buzzed the kind of the Remy that on the couple times on that freeway from Erie. And uh, a couple of times, but that wasn't uh, that wasn't the normal. Yeah, he wasn't he wasn't a falling down drunk. He was he, he kept pretty you know. Yeah, he, he he could handle. I don't know if he was all time, but you know he was he was good fun. Uh, we'll assume you're in this, but uh, who were his favorite people to work with, and who were his favorite people in the business in general? Food. Yeah. Well, I knew he looked, he liked working with Pat. He worked with Pat in San Francisco, Patterson. And then uh, he worked with all the, all the, he had a, he had a run with all the, the previous, uh, oh, up to a point, maybe up to Billy Graham. He would be with Bruno, uh, Pedro. You know, he worked with all the other, uh, the, the former, the old WWWF champions. I know he, I know he had a, a shot in the garden with Bruno off of the top of, from his tag, and, you know, other uh, around he, he was in a lot of single matches. Who, who his favorite were, I don't know. Um, 
we enjoyed. I, I know we worked a lot with Patterson, uh, Bruno. Um, well, Tony, we well, with the tag guys. Tony Gria, we worked with Tony Gria a lot. You know, he knew uh, Tony and, you know, Tony was always in the tag team and different ones, Rick Martell and Haystacks and a couple other guys. So yeah, I don't know so who he hated working against. Um, nah, nobody. Fuji could take care of himself. Fuji was, uh, he had a, a, one time when he was a preliminary guy over here, Carl Gotch, noted uh, wrestler, shooter from, you know, around. And uh, they had some kind of row in the ring where he, you know, and Fuji was, you know, Fuji wasn't afraid, but Fuji's good friend uh, challenged Carl to a fight in the gym, that old Dean's gym. And uh, it wasn't a certain thing to Carl. Well, it was a certain thing he was going to lose because win or lose, he would end up in the, the trunk of somebody's car or, you know, fish food or something, you know. So, you know, it wasn't a winning situation. So Carl was wise to walk away, but uh, he wasn't guaranteed a victory either. And if he'd have fought... Uh, one of those boys from down there, which it was a they're rugged. He food ran with a rugged bunch. He ran with a rugged crowd, and, uh, and he was well respected. I mean, you know, he was he was a he was a, he was a, he was a tough sob. You know, he wasn't uh, you know he wasn't a girly boy. You know, he was, you know, Fuji was a he was a badass. And I tell you what, I'll, uh, I'll wrap up with this one question that I've got to ask. So. Maybe it might be his uh, his best rib that you most fondly remember, or just another story. What's like the best Fuji story that encapsulates everything that Fuji was all about? Oh God, I don't know if it's the best, but it was. It's an unusual one. I was uh, I was back here in Hawaii for some reason. It was during the time of uh, the Peter Maivia's uh, promotion. And I was going through, I think Fuji was coming back. He has daughters from his first wife. Uh, they, they were living here in his, his, his oldest, uh, his first family. And Fuji was coming in for something to see his daughters or, or, or family death or something. And he, he'd come in. So uh, I was involved in a program with, uh, I was working with uh, Mark Lewin and Kevin Sullivan in the big building in Hawaii in, in Blaisdell Center. So, uh, he just, he just come into town. And um, so, the, you know, the, the, the thing, Sullivan and Mark were both in the ring. I didn't get these guys out. I'm only wrestling one at a time because I know the, I said, well, forget this. And I got down, I walked out of the ring, went back to the locker room and I came back with food. And they'd seen me and uh, he'd been my manager and he'd been everything and the place just, ah, just erupted. You know, so we, we went in and kicked the heck out of out of Mark and Kevin and and and, and left him. We're going out and everybody's cheering and hanging on. And we get back to the locker room. Oh, you know, first time anybody ever cheered for me. <laughs> All those years, those years and years in the business, he never he never been uh, never got that that big pop. You know that that big uh, yay. You know, that is, Oh, blow my mind. First time anybody ever cheered for me. <laughs> that might be the best story, but I, it, it, it hit me pretty funny. Yeah. <laughs>